I am Ben Kaznoka, uh, an entrepreneur and author from San Francisco. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. One thing that we both watched, and I think it affected us, was this video from Jeff Bezos on what he called his regret minimization framework. Yes. Right? Where he said, I'm going to look at things as if you know, I'm 10, 20, 30 years in the future and say, did I, would making this decision make me regret it or would not making this yeah. decision make me regret it? That yeah. really affected me. Totally. And so, so the <laughs> funny thing is, is this is a great example of um, kind of nifty, like it's very important to brand ideas. You're a master at this obviously, but regret minimization frameworks, much stickier. I've been, I've been blogging about this concept, yep. I think prior to seeing that speech and then seeing the speech from Bezos was like, uh, it's the same idea, but obviously he's like a thousand times more credible, but also like better framed and position. Packaged beautifully. But on the grip point, yeah, I mean, I used to, and back when I, my early set of talks when I was doing my Startup Life talks, I had a big Mark Twain, uh, I had a big slide of the Mark Twain quote, which was, we regret the things we don't do more than the things we do. And it's, it's the, if you talk to folks uh, and ask them to reflect on their life, you know, older people, it's always the kind of itch of, I wonder what would have happened if. And that is a much more damning question yeah. than the, oh, I went to Brazil and it was a shit show and I got robbed. Yeah. Um, then I wonder what would have happened if I had walked the beaches of Ipanema and, and, and experienced the Brazil that I had dreamed about for so long. So one in doubt, this is kind of one in doubt say yes, um, because better to try and know what it is than to forever live in wonderment about what could have been. Yes. Let's talk about these daily behaviors that we can do instead of just planning 20 years ahead of time. Yeah, well, so I think there's, um, you know, it's often said that it's the things that you do every day that matter more than the things you do once in a while. I think Gretchen Rubin, my mutual friend of ours, says that a lot. Um, I think the uh, the, you know, I've been thinking a lot about serendipity recently because we have a whole uh, chapter in our book on kind of opportunity, how to how to find killer career opportunities and how to generate killer career opportunities and and uh, kind of putting yourself in situations where you're exposed to positive randomness and serendipity is mm -hmm. a key part of that. And you know, a friend of Chris's friends, Johansson, recently wrote a book called The Click Moment about serendipity. Serendipity is kind of hot. And, um, and the things you do to induce serendipity tend to be a strong bias towards action and experimentation. It's, a, it's doing stuff even if the outcome is unknown or unclear and not being dissuaded by uh, kind of small micro failures. So it's showing up at the dinner yep. and actually having it not be very worthwhile, but then showing up the very next night to another dinner. Yes, right? such a profound point. The most highlighted sentence of our book on the Amazon Kindle is the fastest way to become the person you want to be is to hang out with people who are already that way. The way you start thinking more creative is like study the ordinary. Things we just take totally for granted. Yeah. Like why this table has like four legs and is built this way and yeah. start to appreciate ordinariness. And that's what young kids do because they don't know any better. And so what I hear from young parents is when they start looking at the world through that, they get to appreciate it more. And so it's that, it's that osmosis yes. of curiosity. And, and that's what you want to do. Figure out how you can surround yourself with people who think that way and you'll catch the instinct. I totally agree.